Everyone wants peace of mind. A primary method for filling your thoughts with peace is to practice emptying the mind of peace-disturbing factors. I should like to underscore the importance of a frequent mental catharsis. I recommend a mind emptying at least twice every day, more often if necessary. Definitely practice emptying your mind of fears, hates, insecurities, regrets, and guilt feelings. The mere fact that you consciously make this effort to empty your mind tends to give relief. I conducted a religious service on board the steamship Lurleen on a recent voyage to Honolulu. In the course of my talk, I suggested that people who were carrying worries in their minds might go to the stern of the vessel and, in imagination, take each anxious thought out of the mind, drop it overboard, and watch it disappear in the wake of the ship. It seems an almost childlike suggestion, but a man came to me later and said, I did as you suggested, and am amazed at the relief it has given me. During this voyage, he said, every evening at sunset, I'm going to drop all my worries overboard until I begin to develop the psychology of casting them entirely out of my consciousness. Every day I shall watch them disappear in the great ocean of time. Doesn't the Bible say something about forgetting those things that are behind? The man to whom this suggestion appealed is not an impractical sentimentalist. On the contrary, he is a person of extraordinary mental stature, an outstanding leader in his field. Of course, emptying the mind is not enough. When the mind is emptied, something is bound to enter. The mind cannot long remain a vacuum. You cannot go around permanently with an empty mind. It is necessary to refill the emptied mind or the old unhappy thoughts which you have cast out will return to plague you. To prevent that happening, immediately start filling your mind with creative and healthy thoughts. Then when the old fears and hates and worries that have haunted you for so long try to edge back in, they will in effect find a sign on the door of your mind reading, Occupied. At intervals during the day, practice thinking a carefully selected series of peaceful thoughts. Let mental pictures of the most peaceful scenes you have ever witnessed pass across your mind, as, for example, some beautiful valley filled with the hush of evening time. Or recall the silvery light of the moon falling upon rippling waters. Or remember the sea washing gently upon soft shores of sand. Such peaceful thought images will work upon your mind as a healing medicine. Also practice the technique of suggestive articulation, that is, repeat audibly some peaceful words. Words have profound suggestive power, and there is healing in the very saying of them. Use such a word as tranquility. Repeat that word slowly several times. Tranquility is one of the most beautiful and melodic of all English words, and the mere saying of it tends to induce a tranquil state. Another healing word is serenity. Picturize serenity as you say it. Repeat it slowly and in the mood of which the word is a symbol. The words of the Bible have a particularly strong therapeutic value. Drop them into your mind, allowing them to dissolve in consciousness and they will spread a healing bomb throughout your thoughts. A group of businessmen were having a conference. One man was very much on edge. He was snappy, argumentative, high strung. Everyone present knew him well and realized he was under nervous pressure. But finally his irritating attitudes began to get on everybody's nerves. Presently he opened his traveling bag, took out a big bottle of brackish looking medicine and poured himself a large dose. Asked about this medicine, he growled, Oh, it's something for nerves. I feel like I'm going to break in pieces. This medicine was recommended, and I've swallowed several bottles of it, but I don't seem to get any better. The other man laughed. Then one said in a kindly manner, Bill, I can give you some medicine for those nerves that will do you more good than that. I know, because it cured me, and I was worse off than you are. What is this medicine? snapped the other. The other man reached into his bag and pulled out a book. This book will do the job, and I really mean it. I suppose you think it's strange that I carry a Bible around in my bag, but I'm not ashamed of it. 
I've been carrying this Bible for the past two years, and I've marked places in it that help keep my mind at peace. It works for me, and I think it can do something for you, too. The others were listening with interest to this unusual speech. The nervous man had sunk low in his chair. Seeing that he was making an impression, the speaker continued, I had a peculiar experience in a hotel one night which got me into the habit of reading the Bible. I was getting into a pretty tense state. Standing by the dresser, my eye happened to fall upon a Bible lying there. Something impelled me, and I opened the book to one of the Psalms and started to read. I was interested, but certainly surprised at myself, me reading the Bible. It was a laugh, but I kept on reading. Soon I came to the 23rd Psalm, to that line, He leadeth me beside the still waters. I liked that. It sort of got me. I sat there repeating it over and over, and the next thing I knew, I woke up. Apparently, I had dropped off to sleep and slept soundly. I slept only about 15 minutes, but upon awakening was as refreshed and rested as if I'd had a good night's sleep. So after that experience, he said, I use the Bible regularly, and I'm not nearly so nervous as I used to be. So he added, try that, Bill, and see if it doesn't work for you. Bill did try it, and he kept on trying it. And it must have worked well, for he is easy to get along with now. His emotions are under control. These men found that getting peace of mind isn't complicated. You merely feed your mind with thoughts that cause it to be peaceful. To have a mind full of peace, merely fill it full of peace. It's as simple as that.